Hello and welcome to episode four. I think it's four. It might be five. Uh, let's just go with episode Super Bowl because obviously the Super Bowl has concluded. And this is the reason why I wanted to start the podcast. And not for the Super Bowl, obviously. But whenever there's been big moments, I want an outlet to talk immediately about it. When it's raw, when it's fresh, but it, like it's still like a million thoughts running through my mind and I just want to be able to talk about it and get some conversation going. And I know where the conversation will be tonight. I know it will be tomorrow. And I know where it will be historically. They're going to say the Super Bowl sucks. And that's because, quite honestly, defenses get disrespected by casual fans. This is why the NBA has gone to such a, an offensive-minded approach because they're trying to lure in the casual fans. That's why last year's Super Bowl was considered uh, a, a great event, a classic game. That's, and, and it's why this one won't be. But the thing, the, what I like and what I look for as, as a sports fan is competitiveness, competitive nature, competitive balance. And it's rare that you'll see a game come down to the last, uh, the, a Super Bowl come down to the last you know, five minutes of the ball game. Now, we've been lucky. We have been lucky. We've, the last 10 years, we've been getting those games more and more frequently. The last game that I can remember that was not like that was probably the Seahawks versus the Broncos. And now those blowouts are a rarity. But prior to what, 2002, when the, when the uh, Patriots won their first one, you know, you usually saw blowouts. Uh, uh, I mean, you saw the Rams and the Titans. That was a close finish. But prior to that, you saw the you, typically the NFC running all over the field and making the AFC look like a, an inferior conference. But let's talk about this game because I made notes about it because it was a big game. Obviously, it's the Super Bowl, so I made notes about it as, as you know. If you listened to the podcast last year, you're going to be familiar with this format. This is exactly what I was doing with the playoffs of the NBA last year, and from the opening kickoff, uh, you know, a huge kickoff actually. From I can't remember who the return guy is. He's obviously a specialist, and then but and then you saw, as I said, leading into this game, the real uh, test of who was going to uh, emerge victorious in this game will be the front four of the Rams up against the offensive line of the Patriots. And on that opening drive, of course, fantastic field position, but on that opening drive, you did see New England attempt to impose their will on that front four, and it seemed to work until Brady <laughs> threw his first interception of his very first pass attempt. You know, the Rams, they couldn't capitalize. The, the, I think they had a first down on that drive, which was incredibly rare because throughout this game, they had, you know, I think they doubled up in terms of punts as opposed to first downs until, like, the final drive. But look, honestly, the Patriots look shaky, especially Brady. And this was one of the first, and I'm not even talking about just that interception, that very next drive. He did not look good. This is one of the worst starts I have seen him have in a big game situation. Now, the Patriots recovered to pick up some big third down conversions, but then they missed the, third, uh, the field goal. There is a lot of respect, honestly. There was a third and eight, and New England looked to run the ball. And I think that was a great show, uh, showing of respect that New England had for the, the Rams' defense. They, they didn't attempt to pass it. They just wanted to get out of there with, with a field goal attempt. And I said a second ago how shaky the, uh, the Patriots were looking on offense. But quite honestly, the Rams, they looked worse. And I felt that coming into this game, that that, that would be the case. The, the, to start, there would be an extended filling out period. That typically is when you have a, a two-week uh, window to prepare for the opposing team. But, you know, what I originally predicted is there would be a slow start offensively, then the floodgates would open. And Edelman, even early on, he was just tearing up Tlaib and, and anyone else who was attempting to check him. And as I'm recording, this is just at the end of the game, so I don't know if he's won uh, the MVP or not. If he doesn't, that's a shame. That's an absolute shame. I can't think of who you would go for. I mean... No, there's not, even, not even Brady. You couldn't give it Brady on a sympathy vote because there's just no way you could do it. There's absolutely no way you could do it because he looked outside of Edelman. Who did he completed like a, a pass to like a few, a couple of passes? Excuse me to to Gronk. It has to be Edelman. 
And in but in the first half, he looked very effective. I it, the only time I've ever seen wide receivers really control uh, the game as well as Edelman has in the first half is the real big marquee ones. Randy Moss, Terrell Owens, plays of that, and no one's ever put Edelman in that category. Like the Patriots and his and his teammates, they know how good he is, but it's I haven't seen him play this good in in his entire life ever as well as he played in that first half. Now, the Rams, look, they, they, they had had three possessions, and they were yet to have one snap in New England territory. Just think about that. I'm not talking about three downs. I'm talking about three possessions. And I know people, look, as I said, I know people are going to be upset by the lack of scoring, but I'm loving the defensive chess moves. And there was a huge play. Uh, it was a third down, and it was around uh, midfield, and it was just pure genius. I've never seen anything that complicated and that complex by the Patriots' defense. And what happened was it was third and eight, third and nine, whatever it was, and the Patriots, they crowded the line, so you got four on the line, on the defensive line, and they crowded. They put an additional four players up there, so eight in the box, right? Typically, what will happen when, the, uh, when they crowd a line like that is they won't rush everybody. Players will drop back. And what happened was the Patriots, they dropped two back. So the Rams went to the other two, assuming that the other two that the other two defenders were going to be the runs rushing. So they're going to be rushing six. But what actually happened, it was delayed. So those two that were still there, they weren't actually rushing. So the guys went forward and back. And it completely confused the Rams offense. And whilst it confused the Rams offense, you had this delayed blitz. <laughs> they had no idea to pick it up. It was, it was pure genius. But the, honestly, the, the, the Patriots weren't the only ones dominating defensively. You know, the Patriots missing that fourth down conversion. Look, it showed where points were at a premium. It showed how, and field position was at a premium too, excuse me. But it showed how Wade Phillips in the first half, he was beating Brady. But on the other side, you can say even more emphatically, Belichick had, had an even more impressive showing up against Goff and the Rams. Now, we're about to go into halftime. And the Rams, the question is, how can the, the because obviously halftime in the Super Bowl, it's longer because of all the shows and all that stuff. So it's, it's almost like two games. You have, a, you have an additional period of time to, to have a second game, right? And that's typically how it's viewed. <clears throat> and the questions arising from that is how can the Rams adjust to Edelman and the Patriots defense? <clears throat> Excuse me. And the question on the other side is how can the Patriots get their offense going? Can they keep their nerve with their running game? Because the running game was effective and their underneath passing game. What will they do to keep what will they do if Edelman is doubled and taken out of the out of the game. Who do they go to? They go back to Gronk. I mean, do they go to Hogan? I mean, is he enough? And at halftime, look, <laughs> I saw the greatest heart ad I have ever seen in my life. That NFL 100 ad. That was amazing. That was really good. If you haven't seen that, if you were watching in Australia and you didn't get that, please go to YouTube, type it in wherever you got to go. I don't care. Check out that ad. It was one of the best best mixes of you know, classic plays and, and, and the new generation. I didn't realize they were in their hundredth year. I thought that they had a, what was it, the 1960s they came in. I know that there was the NFC and AFC merger. Maybe they're taking that into account. But for whatever reason, that ad was, that was spot on. As for the halftime show, you know, I don't watch that garbage, the, but, but the wife did. <laughs> and all I can say, all I can say to that, is uh is auto tune is one hell of a drug, and the only good thing about the halftime show is it's open season when it comes to roasting those talentless hacks. And what pisses me off about that is there's so many people of talent. You go on YouTube, you listen to a lot of people, a lot of actual musicians, and for whatever reason they can't get into that industry. And yet you got people that sound like that when they're live. You've got to be kidding me. And they're meant to be the top of their profession too, by the way. Now, getting back to the game, <clears throat> and it wasn't until late in the third quarter before we started to see the Rams' offense move the ball a little. 
let's not underestimate what happened to Patrick Chung because that was massive. And the reason for that is he's such a good communicator at the safety position. So if you guys are new to American football, especially if you're from overseas, what happens in play action is it's a fake to a, uh, to a running play and then the quarterback will pass it. Now, what that typically will do is it will freeze the safeties because the safeties, when it's a run play, will have to come up and give help in, in, in the run defense. Now, what a play action will do is, is trying to do at least, is to get the safety to commit to a run and then you're able to get them out of position and you can exploit them on, on um, long passing situations. So, what that means with Patrick Chung, who is their best or at least the most experienced defensive back, and allowed in those play action situations, which is exactly what the Rams have thrived on all season long, as well as misdirections in their running game, what it allows them to do is be patient with that because he's able to diagnose whether it's a play action or if it's a genuine run very quickly. Now, without him, the Patriots would have to, and you started to see this, and this allowed them to get the, the Rams offense in gear. They actually had to bring a lot more pressure now because they couldn't just sit back because they had to get to Goff early and make him uncomfortable. And that's why after his, inju- after his injury, the offense of the Rams looked like one that was actually capable of getting a first down. <laughs> actually, they looked a lot more capable than that at times. Uh, the Patriots offense needs to step up because all they've been feasting off, you know, they've been benefiting off what their defense has been able to do. Now their defense is very susceptible to giving up big plays. So they're going to have to go back to Gronk. There's no question about it because who else do they have? They've got Edelman, but Edelman is not going to be able to beat a triple team out there. And that's what we're going to probably see. And that's exactly how we saw them counter is they went to Gronk off, ironically, it was a play action. It wasn't a play action, but it was the same formation. It was a big set, and it looked like a, a, they were just going to run the ball in because that's all they were doing, running, running, running. And they weren't giving any balance, so that allowed uh, the Rams to, to really load up on them. And then in the same formation, this is a basic fade route for Gronk. It was able to give him a first down, and that opened up things for Edelman, and then they went back to Gronk. And finally, it only took us, what, nearly three full, three full quarters, but we have a touchdown. And look, the Rams responded by finally throwing the ball downfield and looking threatening, but that ended with a Gilmore uh, picking that off on the four-yard line. The Patriots marched the ball back down the field, mainly through the run game. And I'm sure people were, were surprised by that, considering how well the well, not how well, but the, once again, the New England Patriots offensive line, they were really manhandling a, a dominant front four, and they looked even more dominant in that run game because you knew that they were going to run it in this situation because they wanted to take time off the, off the clock. But they were very effective, in it, and you've just got to boil it down to in that situation, they just wore down. They just wore them down all game. You know, I don't have the, the stats in front of me, but it had to be at least a two to one ratio in terms of uh, time of possession, and and it's got to be close to that as well in actual plays going off. Uh, actually, I'd be surprised if it is even two to one in terms of plays, and they just look tired. And later on in that drive, though, you know, I've seen fourth and inches. I mean, every NFL fan has seen fourth and inches. I have never ever seen a fourth and inch though, and that's what it was. But, and that must have been very, very, very tempting for Belichick to go for it. Because they had, the, the Rams had no timeouts left. A first down ends it. There's no questions at that stage because you just kneel, kneel the ball at that point. And that's the, end of the, that's the end of the game if you're able to pick up an additional first down. But even though it was just one inch away, he, they held their nerve and they went for the, they went for the kick, made it a, a, two, a two possession game. Gronkowski knocked it over. I think it was from 40 yards out. And what can you say? Welcome to six championships and six rings for Brady and Belichick. And Brady, obviously, he clearly did not have the best game of his career. But outside of his first pass, which was obviously picked off, 
he played an unimpressive but a very well managed game. It kind of reminded me of Peter Manning's last game. Now, I'm not going to say he's going to retire because he said, like I've said that before, <laughs> it turns out that he's not going to. I'll take him at his word. He seems very happy. And I don't think the Patriots are going to be in any rush to get rid of him or to look for a replacement. But also, sometimes this is out of your control. And sometimes it can be an injury. And I'm not wishing that on him, but this may be the last time we actually see Brady at the pinnacle. And look, for all the talk, and Pat, we, look, we missed it all, and myself included, because all the talk we had leading into this was, has Brady eclipsed Jordan? Has he eclipsed everybody as an athlete in terms of accomplishments? But you know who we really, this, this conversation should be about, especially in the aftermath of this game? It should be about Belichick. Because Brady, as I just said, he had a pretty ordinary game. And Belichick's offense, uh, not offense, but his coaching, that's what got them over the line here. The strategy was unbelievably well executed. That has to go back to the coach. And you look at this, honestly, this may have been Brady's worst performance I've seen, especially in a winning situation in, in the NFL playoffs. Forget just the Super Bowl, just the NFL playoffs. But this, on the other side of the equation, I think this was Belichick's best performance. And when you look at how hard it is to win Super Bowls, that's what we need to start evaluating as well because of all this parity. And this isn't like Phil Jackson picking and choosing his spots. You know, he didn't pick and choose Jordan and Pippen, obviously. And he did get them to six championships. I'll give you, I'll give you that. I have no question about it. He did pick and choose the Shaq and Kobe situation. And he did pick and choose going back to coach Kobe. So he never really had to rebuild a roster. And this is... Look, keep in mind, it's not just six titles for, for Belichick. It's six titles as a head coach. But if you think back to the Giants, what did they win with? They, win, they won with defense. Lawrence Taylor, all those guys, right? Sure, you had Phil Simms, right? But that defense is what carried them. And a lot of people say that, of course, retrospectively as well, but a lot of people will say that the, the two uh, titles that Belichick won in, in New England, that was a result more of Belichick than it was Parcells. So that's two titles. And plus, there's another title in Baltimore that probably should have Belichick's name on it. He was the one that really put the Baltimore Ravens together or the foundation of that Ravens team together when they were in the Browns and he was head coach of the Browns. And of course they moved and, and Belichick was no longer the coach, obviously. So look, it's hard to argue against Belichick because look, what we just saw was unbelievable. It, and this is why I'm, I'm, I'm almost lost for words here and I'm, I'm recording it. Without any preparation, I'm just talking very, I'm trying, this, as I said, this is why I wanted this, right? So I could just talk freely. But what we saw was so special there. It's a beauty of sport. You know, this is why we play the game. This is why they play the game. It's so, because on paper, there's no way New England wins that game. There's no, they had no right to win that game. They had no right to win the game up against Kansas City either. And for them to pull that out of the, just, not just pull it out, but they never trailed in that game. I don't think uh, the Rams were even in the red zone all game. You know, it was, it was rare that they were actually took a snap in, their, in, in New England territory. I mean, that's, that's a dominant performance. It really is. Uh, I, I, I don't know how to, how to put it. I really don't. And the only thing that keeps creeping back into my mind is a quote from Rudy Tomjanovich after they won their second title. They were the sixth seed. No one really took them seriously. Uh, they limped into the playoffs, 47 wins, whatever it was. And they beat Utah. Utah was a 60-win team. They beat Phoenix. They were a 59 team. They beat uh, 
San Antonio, 62 win team, David Robinson, and they swept Shaq and Penny Hardaway in the top seed from the Eastern Conference. The same to- top seed that knocked out Jordan and Pippen in 1995. And Rudy T, Rudy Tomjanovich, gets up there and he goes, never underestimate the heart of a champion. This is right there. This is right there. This was beautiful. If you love sports, I don't care if you were expecting 30 points. I don't give a shit. I really don't care what your, your expectations of how many points we're going to score. This was beautiful. If you appreciate sports, you'll, appreciate, you'll have fully appreciated what you've just seen. And that is the epitome of sports greatness. And that I, I thought that this, if I was going to come on here and talk about the, the Rams winning or the Patriots winning, if it was the Patriots winning, I'd be talking about this for, for Tom Brady. I didn't think I'd be talking about it for Bill Belichick. But here I am. Bill Belichick deserves all the credit in the world for this victory. And I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say. Um, I'm going to have to go soon because of load management. <laughs> what kind of BS is that, by the way? Load management. That's a new one. <laughs> it's like, good one, LeBron. Well done. Load management. So the load management was fine when you were playing up against the Clippers, but... Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I just put that in there so I can sneak this back onto the I Still Love This Game Network uh, on the podcast. <laughs> I did catch the uh, the Celtics and Oklahoma City Thunder game before. I'd love to see the NBA get rid of conferences for what I saw earlier because that was an intense matchup, and we're never going to see it unless both teams make the finals, and the likeliness of that happening is very small. But if we got rid of conferences, then we'd have a good chance. We'd have a... a, I don't have the the season records in front of me, um, but at least there's a chance that they could actually meet in the playoffs. Right now, there's no chance, unless, as I said, they they make the NBA Finals. But I, I don't think either team will make the Finals, to be honest with you. But that being said, you know... The NBA has, has tried to steal the thunder and the spotlight from the NFL for far too long this week. Uh, I'm not going to participate in that tonight. This is Bill Belichick, and quite honestly, you know, let me rescind my uh, my vote for MVP. It should not be Edelman. It should be Bill Belichick. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the game, even though there wasn't a whole lot of scoring. It was a hell of a game. It was close. And if you enjoyed defensive football, then great, you'll enjoy it. And before I go, for all those people that saw the Rams versus Chiefs game on Monday Night Football, where it was, what, one of, I think, the second highest scoring game in NFL history, and clearly the, mo- the highest scoring game when the game was competitive. And in the aftermath of that, there, were, there was a lot of uh, comments and feedback of, of the game saying, hey, this is just the way the game is played. Now, get with it. Get with the times. So the lack of sympathy to people that appreciated defense was, uh, is not forgotten. So if any of those people that were saying, hey, get with the times, this is the way the football's played, if that was your attitude then when offense was dominating, eat a dick and enjoy <laughs> good defense <laughs> because, hey, to quote you guys, that's the way it's played now. So deal with it. Anyway, uh, if you're driving, uh, please don't do so if you've been drinking, obviously. Get home safe. Enjoy the rest of your week. Uh, This will be the last uh, NFL podcast uh, on I Still Love This Game. We'll be moving over soon before the the draft, and that will be fun. And uh, I've still got to think of a name for the the football podcast. I'll come up with something. Um, But garbage time will, will remain by the way, and it will be football, basketball, any other sport that I can think of. Uh, Not entertainment, because I hate entertainment, unless it's something big. But yeah, I'm not a big fan of entertainment. Maybe maybe it'll be stuff retrospectively, like when TV was decent, (laughs) you know, the 80s and 90s, maybe The Office, that was a pretty good show too. But yeah, we'll figure something out. The podcast network is still on track, as well as some of those shows coming up. Got a few guests coming up as well, and I still love this game, so there's quite a few things to be excited about. 
and thank you for your patience uh if you don't like basketball uh, sorry if you don't like football and you know i apologize that you've had to skip over some of these episodes but football's great man it's a hell of a sport and this what we just watched was you know to borrow a boxing uh analogy or example it was kind of like ali versus foreman in terms of just at that point you did not expect that it was it was great anyway guys uh take care and i'll see you later on this week or you'll hear from me later on this week with an nba podcast